So do you actually need to retune your car's computer every time you add a mod to it? So in this video, we're just going to look at some of the mods that definitely do require a retune of the ECU. We're going to look at some mods that will still work without that, but we'll suggest reasons why you would actually want to get the computer tuned. And there's a whole raft of mods that require no adjustment whatsoever to the car's computer. So in a modern engine, it will trim itself to some extent if things change within the engine. So it will control the fuel delivery. And if it's able to burn more fuel and still meet the emissions regulations and the power outputs that have been set, it will dump more fuel into the engine. So when you add mods to your engine, to a certain extent, most modern engines can make an adjustment to what's already there to accommodate some of the extra air or the extra fuel that's going into the engine. There are some setups, though, where the power is deliberately limited within the ECU. So I'm thinking particularly of cars with modern automatic transmissions, where there's maybe some kind of torque limit that has been imposed. So if you start hitting that torque limit, you're going to be wasting your money on mods if you're not going to get that torque limit adjusted within the car's computer. But I'm going to try and keep this video very general and just look at the mods which will require an adjustment and those that won't. So first up, exhaust mods. So very very, very popular mods. Everyone's doing this mod on their car. So do you need to adjust the computer? Well, the key principle really when making a decision is are you adjusting the car's ability to burn fuel more effectively? And if you're adding a better flowing exhaust to your engine, then it will be able to make higher power figures. And although the computer itself will trim itself to a certain extent, you should really get that adjusted within the ECU to just maximize the benefit. So cat back exhaust mods, so from the catalyst to the rear of the car, we don't generally see very much difference. So we've got to really isolate the two types of engine that people come to us with. You've got turbocharged engines and naturally aspirated engines. So turbocharged engines are cramming a lot more air into the engine. So flow in and out of the engine is much more important. And on those engines, you may see a little bit of a, a power hike if you get a better flowing exhaust. But the typical restriction are through the catalysts and the exhaust headers and it's not legal to make the adjustment to these in all areas so you do need to just check that you're not going to fall foul of your local emissions regulations and maybe fail the annual inspection that the car goes through but if it's legal to do so you've got options as well where you can maybe add a better flowing sports catalyst or sports DPF, which is a compromise between removing it completely and falling foul of the law or still meeting those emissions regulations. So it's not that vital to get the ECU adjusted or tuned or remapped when you have an exhaust system dropped on the car, if that's the only mod you've done. So it should be able to work out that the exhaust gases are flowing better and make whatever adjustments it needs. There's generally about 15% leeway when it comes to fuel delivery on a modern ECU setup. So the fuel pressure regulator, so cars have these to just regulate the pressure of the fuel before it hits the injector and goes into the engine. So a fuel pressure regulator generally increases the rail pressure of the fuel. So that doesn't have that much of an effect on the power because the car is set up to deliver a set amount of fuel and to burn it. It won't appreciate too much fuel going in without the ECU backing it off. So if you have a fuel pressure regulator fitted to your car and you just want to maximize the fuel delivery above and beyond what the manufacturer set, you will need to adjust the ECU. It's making a significant change to the way that the fuel is actually delivered to the engine. But in most cases, if you just fit a fuel pressure regulator, you'll notice the throttle response is more snappy. You get a faster reaction when you press the pedal down. So again, that depends very much on the engine. So I'm thinking particularly of older naturally aspirated engines that don't utilize a drive-by-wire setup particularly. Um, but I can't make blanket rules. There's so many exceptions out there. So intakes, another very popular mod. So the intake idea is that the air going into the engine is not restricted. It flows freely into the engine. So you've got various different filter options, cone filters, panel filters, higher flowing panel filters made of different materials. Cotton gauze seems to be particularly effective because it offers good filtration and also very little 
by way of a restriction, but there's various foam options out there and other materials that have been used just to aid the airflow into the engine. So again, the stock ECU can make adjustments to a certain degree to accommodate for the better flow of air going into the engine. But again, if you want to maximize the returns, particularly on a turbocharged engine, where it's going to appreciate that lower restriction on the intake, you should really make an adjustment within the ECU. So there are a whole raft of mods that don't need any adjustment at all for you to get the maximum benefit from it. So engine mods, I think of the oil catch can that sits between the crankcase through the positive crankcase ventilation system and into the intake. So that doesn't make any adjustment at all to the way the engine burns fuel. It just protects the engine and stops the carbon buildup from happening on the intake. So it's a good idea on a lot of cars to actually get one. There's another video that I've done that discusses oil catch cans, but no adjustment is required in the ECU for that to work. Other mods are suspension mods. They're quite popular. So lowering the car, firming up the suspension, adjusting the brakes as well fitting bigger brakes, different brake pads, different sized brake rotors or brake discs. Um, they all improve the car's handling to a certain degree. But again, you don't need to make an adjustment to the engine computer because they're not items that are controlled by the engine computer. So there's probably a few exceptions out there. If you've got a car with an electronic suspension system, you may need to make some sort of adjustment within that if you fit a different suspension kit. Otherwise, you might get some sort of error coming up on the dashboard. But in the main, suspension, brakes, polyurethane bushings, they're all things that you can add to your car without worrying about it. So the takeaway from this really is that if the mod is adding power or allowing the car to burn more fuel, you do need to get that adjustment done within the computer. It needs to know what it can work with. And if there are factory limits that have been imposed, you need to make an adjustment to those so that you can fully maximize the return on the investment. But bear in mind, some of those factory limits are designed to protect things like the gearbox or the transmission. So you want to do your research carefully and just make sure that your gearbox and transmission are up to spec if you're pushing substantial amounts more power through. And then there's a whole raft of obvious mods that we're thinking about, like turbocharger upgrades. They make a significant difference to an engine. So they wouldn't even work if you didn't adjust the ECU when you added these to the car. So they, these mods we tend to regard as stage two mods. They require other mods to work. So what we've discussed so far mod wise, they will probably still work and still work okay on a stock factory ECU setup. But when you start adding multiple mods and things like turbochargers, different profile of injectors that deliver a, a much different quantity of fuel and have different flow characteristics to the factory ones, you do need to make that adjustment within the ECU. So do you just go out and buy single mods and keep adding these to your car and adjust the ECU? Well, it's quite expensive to do it that way. Most people will plan that carefully, sit down, come up with a list of mods that they want to do to their car to achieve a set power figure. And they'll just make sure that everything they've got is in place to reach those power figures. The remap or the computer tune will be the last mod that they do that just ties everything together and makes it work most effectively. So I hope this has answered the question and just highlighted the mods you can get away without having to do a remap or a computer tune. Those mods that definitely do not require a computer tune or a remap. And the sort of mods you should be looking out for that won't won't work unless you get that computer actually adjusted. I hope this video has been interesting to you. Thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you just to help you to get the maximum performance from your car and the mods that you've added to it.